today. Yeah. Me, yeah, I had to leave my Hallelujah. house by 3 30 to get here. I had to travel. But we thank God because we're here to bless the name of the Lord. And so, Lord, as we commence the service, we we'll pray that let your presence be with us in the name of Jesus. We we'll pray that you move in everything that we do in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen.
From everlasting, everlasting to everlasting, I will praise you. From everlasting, everlasting, now you be God. You be God. I'm a big God. You know the man. You know me. Amazing God. 
God is who you are. You are amazing, reliable God. God is who you are. God is who you are. You are reliable. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for bringing us together this evening to draw from you, Jesus, the wisdom and the power of God. And we ask that in the course of this service, this evening, truly you will speak to our hearts and you will instruct us in the way of righteousness. Thank you because everything that we will do, we honor you tonight and your name will be glorified forevermore. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Bible study this evening. Welcome. When I was in first year of um, secondary school, and I guess that is JSS 1, isn't it? Yeah. And you know, for some bigger boys that did Form 1, we respect. Second, <laughs> Bella, is it your baby that must be doing birthday every time or something? This year court is so fine. Okay. Okay, once again, welcome everybody to tonight's Bible study. I was talking about the fact that when some of us were in GSS 1, we were taught um, about um, characteristics of um, living things. And one of the things we were taught is they can move. You know, living things can move. And um, we didn't have any problem with the movement of living things. We didn't have problem from walking and from people who can walk to embracing people who can ride on horses and people who can use a car and people who can fly via the aeroplane. We accepted that 
perfectly. And yet there is another thing about living things, which is the fact that reproduction is a necessity as regards living things. And yet we find ourselves struggling for things that does not align with the fact that um, there can only be one means of that reproduction. And tonight, we want to honor God, um, broaden our scope, and look at this topic we are handling tonight, which is the fact that reproduction in, in the modern era, embracing technology and science, and then we want to trust how God will help us this evening. As I've said, if we can embrace all the other things living things can do, I think without struggling with flying and um, where's that guy taking everybody to now to mass living living things can go there but living things have chosen especially as regards human that there's only one means of reproduction but we'll find out tonight god's word and then i'm honored that we have ready to take this um, study this evening uh dr yinka ufudu is Dr. Yinka ready for us this evening to take the study? Are we ready, sir? Okay. Dr. Ofodu, good evening and welcome to tonight's Bible study. Yinka. Hello, Dr. Yinka. Can you hear me? Just hold on, just hold on. We can hear. Okay. Yep. Dr. Alfredo. Dr. Alfredo. We can't hear you, Ma. Could it be the airpiece? Me now. Fantastic. Okay, we can hear you very well now. Okay, thank you. Okay, good evening, like Arena family. Thank you for the privilege of speaking with you. Very loud and clear. We can hear you now.
diseases. Finally, the next step after your consultation is your ovulation stimulation. You're, you're placed on certain amount of drugs or certain types of drugs that stimulate ovulation that help you to produce more eggs um, prior to the third stage. So some women placed on are placed on certain medications to stimulate their ovaries to produce more eggs. That is, you will need a woman may need to use fertility drugs to make a ovulate in order to produce a lot of eggs. So in addition to ovulation stimulation, you'll be advised on certain lifestyle modifications that will boost your fertility too. You'll be placed on certain vitamins, that is, um, you'll be placed on vitamin supplementation. You'll be advised to be in the habit of sleeping soundly. And when they say sleeping soundly, you'll be um, like sleeping within nighttime sleep within, within uh, one, sorry, nighttime sleep of an average of, let's say, seven hours. In addition, some of the drugs you'll be giving also will help encourage sleep. And also, you'll be told to take up some form of exercise, essentially very light exercise, aerobics, like aerobics, we call them aerobics, like swimming, very light exercises. Um, once um, your ovaries are stimulated, you're placed on, on certain medication, fertility drugs, follow up continues, and um, you're given um, follow up and um, scheduled follow up visits to monitor. Um, what do you call it? If your eggs are maturing in respect to the drugs that are being given, and also there will be further tests done to measure your um, to measure your response to such drugs. So, what do you expect um, during and after the procedure? So that takes us to step three, which is the egg retrieval. Egg retrieval, that is after the ovarian stimulation, you'll be scheduled for you'll be scheduled for egg retrieval. And this egg retrieval is done under sedation. It's done under sedation because of pain. And um certain quarters will tell you that oh, the pain is not that bad. However, let's keep in consideration that people have different threshold of pain. Essentially, it is done under light sedation. Then, and a common approach is um, the um, is through a process known as a transvaginal ultrasound. So what they do essentially is they pass a, um, an ultrasound probe through your vagina, and um, a needle a needle um, is guided through the vaginal eye into your follicle. Your follicle is essentially where they get the pain. Then a suction device is attached to the needle to remove the eggs from the follicle. During the process of um, egg retrieval, your doctor may take up to as much as 15 eggs. And this is done so that you too, you, it won't be a case of you coming back for your egg retrieval in the sense that once 15 eggs are taken, the chances of them getting five or better still six or seven matured quality eggs is higher than them just going for egg retrieval and just getting a lower sum like 10 eggs so we'll go to the fourth step which is the freezing so shortly after your eggs have been taken out they are cooled under a very 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 low temperature sub zero temperature as low as a um, minus 360 degree and um, the process most commonly used for egg freezing as i said earlier is known as vitrification then the eye concentrations of substances are placed around your egg to help it freeze and to reduce the water body around your egg so that it will keep it to preserve it in a bed, uh, in a better form or in a in a form in which it will last for a long time till you intend to use it so after the procedure typically you can resume normal activities within a week then you're advised to contact your doctor or the healthcare prof uh, professional or the fertility physician when you have a fever which is higher than the regular body and um, body temperature or a fever which is as high as 38 degree Celsius when you have um, a severe abdominal pain you contact your 
doctor after the procedure, when you have weight gain as much as a kilogram within 24 hours of egg retrieval, it is advisable to contact your doctor. Also, if there is um, heavy vaginal bleeding and difficulty in urinating, kindly contact your doctor. So when you want to use your frozen eggs, they will be defrozen, what we know that, what we call toying. So the fertilized, um, um, it will be defrozen, then it will be fertilized with the sperm in the lab and implanted in your uterus when you need it. Or if you, uh, if you intend to use a gestational carrier or a surrogate, it will be implanted in the surrogate. If the egg is fertilized by a process known as the usual process that is used to fertilize this frozen egg is known as they call it ICSC, ICSI, and that is um, just essentially in, it's known as intracytoplasmic sperm injection. What um, the process essentially requires them injecting the sperm directly to the center of the egg. So the chances of achieving pregnancy with this method is very, very high. So again, the chances of achieving preg um, pregnancy after implant implantation um, is usually 30 to 60%, and it is usually multi multifactorial. Again, as, as I said earlier, multifactorial, it might be the age of the woman who intends to use this process. It might also be the fact that there might be other abnormalities with the reproductive organ of the woman. So what are the pros and what are the ethical concerns and the risk with egg freezing? So the benefits, which are the pros? As earlier mentioned, the major advantage of egg freezing is preservation of fertility. So it extends your fertility potential. Also, it helps with the preservation of your biological clock. So it also um, helps to expand reproductive options, your reproductive options in latter years, and also preserves the younger and possibly healthier eggs that you have. Um, as I earlier said, egg freezing is an increasing option for extending child bearing years. The ethical concerns with um, with egg freezing are the commercial exploitation and the pressure on women to use that freezing, which can also be, which can also form part of commercial exploitation. Then we also have cases of fertility, fertility fraud. So what is fertility fraud? Fertility fraud is the failure on the part of the fertility doctor, in this case now, a male fertility doctor, to obtain consent from a patient before inseminating this patient with, with his own sperm, yeah. There are some doctors, male doctors to be precise, who have been known to um, fertilize eggs, frozen eggs, with their own sperm and help transfer the embryo form into the woman. So if you are familiar with a particular Docu series, a documentary series on on Netflix, which is currently streaming, is called. Um, the name of the series is Our Father. So it's a case of is a um, it's a series on a particular doctor in the late seventies who essentially um, got a lot of his patients impregnated with his own sperm. Um, um, also, I like to say certain theological movements, which are essentially court movements, also believe in um, your quiver being full of arrows. In this sense, the arrows are your children, are the children, and your quiver is um, the collector of these arrows. So they believe, they go by the, the, this doctrinal movement or this religious movement, are known as the quiverful movement, and they follow the biblical, they follow the um, they follow Psalm 127, verses 3 to 7, we talked about children being arrows and how good it is to have your quiver filled with them. So that's Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. So what are the risks of um, egg freezing? 
The risk of egg freezing can be divided into three. We have conditions related to the use of fertility drugs. We have the procedure risk associated. Okay. Um, I don't know for all you've had so far. I guess we have some candidates who are ready to do egg freezing now, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, we need to start articulating our questions um, because we're going to ask questions and so that we get some clarity. Um, Dr. Yinka is coming back on shortly now, but we need to start getting our questions so that we can make this to be interactive as possible. And then we're asking the question, going through this process, is it necessary? Um, it's so easy for some of us that are one time to just think that's how it is for everybody. Um, so so what I'm just trying to say is that let's start getting our questions ready so that we can ask um, probably the cost of this. I'm sure it's very cheap. You can just walk in and then get it done. Doctor, I'm sure Dr. Olua is here to, to add to what is going on now, isn't it? Yes, because those are part of the things agitating my own mind. You are going to freeze it in sub uh, 360. So where, what are they using to power it? Is it um, solar? Is it generator? I'm just wondering. These are some of the things that has come to my mind. But I think one or two positives we can take away right away without actually doing egg freezing is that I, I was hearing out talking about lifestyle, quality of our life, what we do, what we eat, how we sleep, the exercise we engage in. Because the reality is that all these are affecting us. Are you with me? And I think we should start taking it seriously, more so that we've been told that um, uh, at birth, how many? One million? Uh, and by the time you are becoming, it has reduced to 300. And that they are telling us that by the time you are 35, the quality has greatly dropped, even of the one that is remaining unused. So we are asking ourselves, what do we need to do along this line? So for me, one of the take home today is not agitation, it's not to it's be not afraid, to be but it's for us to intentionally see how we are living our lives now and what we can do. And uh, before doctor comes up, let me quickly share this testimony with you because uh, we had to go through the waiting years to, to do the test and to do all these things before getting to have children. I, I want you to know that irrespective of whatever the doctor's verdict is or whatever we are going through, as much as we are committed to doing what is right, I want you to know that we still have God. And I am a testimony of one whom God stepped in and he came. Odo, Rapita, you were holding the mic. I guess probably you wanted to say something. Uh, for me, first, the thought of the mere thoughts that um, there's a chance that this one we, we can feel is even scary. You know, after going through all this. Did they say it can still feel? Yes. There is no what chance. It's, it's, it's highly. It's likely, very, very likely, highly. That, that's, why, that's why they talked about doing your due diligence and everything. You know, for me, first, it makes me doff my heart again, once again, for women. You know, what they have to go through and all, all stuff. You actually said some of the things I wanted to say, you know, but I was just looking. The question is this. This egg um, freezing. Okay, talk about harvesting 15. So from that 15, you can get five. Yes. You may get five. 
that has that is highly, that is highly qualitative highly. because with age the quality reduces mm. so I was, I was thinking that by the time you harvest 15 <laughs> okay doctor I, I hope you are hearing our interaction all the while yes I can okay uh, okay so you know a young girl freezes um, gets or harvests 15 eggs and keeps 15 eggs. Okay. I was wondering what okay. would make, since it's already frozen, after getting 15, what's what all no. 15? Okay. Okay, what I said is, you get to harvest, so, during the egg retrieval process, you get to harvest, your doctor gets to harvest as many as 15 eggs. Okay. And the reason that is being done is to have a large pool of eggs where they can up extract the quality eggs. What I'm trying to say is out of the 15 eggs, it's not all the 15 eggs that will be frozen. Maybe five to six oh. might just be those that meet the criteria for being frozen. And the criteria is usually good quality and matured eggs. So I'm, I, I'm sorry about that. You don't get to freeze 15 eggs. 15 eggs are retrieved so that it will increase your chances. There will be an increase in your chances of getting about five to six matured and quality eggs not all 15 eggs are fro that are retrieved they are frozen i hope i'm clear by that yeah yeah okay yeah. very clear you can go on okay so the misconceptions with um with um, egg freezing and in vitro fertilization or, yeah, egg feeding and one of the process of achieving pregnancy, which is in vitro fertilization. So one of the misconceptions is I will have to do IVF in the future. I like to say using the frozen eggs one day would require you doing in vitro fertilization, yes. However, let me remind you that egg freezing is a backup plan. It is a backup plan, and most women will freeze their egg ultimately do not need to use them most again i will say most and this has to do with the age range or the brackets the age range um of the woman who do this egg freezing procedure again i'll repeat that egg freezing is a backup plan and most women who freeze their eggs ultimately may not use this egg still women who freeze these eggs still have a peace of mind. Then there's some sort of a peace of mind because we really don't know what tomorrow holds. Anything can happen and which which you might not which you be happy that would not warrant you sulking or having that good trip that oh how I wish that I froze my head. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So as I said, it is a better option because you have that that, that sort of that sort some um, that's some sort of peace of mind, knowing that your eggs are preserved. Um, another misconception is egg freezing is one hundred percent fertility assurance. Egg freezing does not guarantee forever fertility. So a common mis um, misconception that women usually have is that by egg freezing their egg, they can have children whenever they want. It is not true. Because it is not, um, egg freezing is, itself is not, as I said, is not a guarantee for forever fertility. It is not an insurance policy for fertility. And again, because of, um, with latter, with, um, with um, increasing age, other factors might set in that might not make you be in a good capacity to carry this, um, to, to carry the pregnancy and ailments like high blood pressure, diabetes, they're one of the contraindications for you carrying the pregnancy when, even if you have those eggs preserved. So another misconception is I heard that egg freezing process could cause fertility issues in the future. There is no documented evidence that egg freezing reduces your chances of conceiving in the future. Yes, there might be complications with the procedure with a, parti a particular step in the procedure, but in a whole, egg freezing. There's no documented um, documented evidence that F egg freezing decreased or reduced the 
chances of conceiving in the future. So, egg-freezing and certain Christian views. Some Christians are of the opinion that those who support egg-freezing or those who want to free their hair should limit it to married couples. So what they mean by that is that all the embryos must be replaced in the uterus of a married couple. And also, they also have this belief that there should not be a selectivity um, selection of which embryo is replaced. So most of these, um, majority of these Christians are against things like um, pre-implantation screening. That is even screening for genetic disorders in these embryos before you implant them. So again, um, um, again, um, for those against, we have um, those that believe that any form of fertility treatment is unnatural and children to be, should, be, um, should exist by way of intimate relationship between a man and a woman. So um, now we'll be going through assisted reproductive technology. I'll try to go fast with the, with given the short period of time I have. So for assisted reproductive technology, we have different forms. We have embryo freezing, which unlike egg freezing, we have the sperm already fertilized. Um, we have already fertilized um, products. That means we have the egg and the sperm already fertilized, then frozen. The difference between egg freezing and embryo freezing as explained is that the makeup of the unfertilized eggs, in addition to the fact that you freeze an unfertilized egg and you freeze fertilized egg in embryo freezing, the makeup of unfertilized eggs makes it a bit difficult to freeze when you compare it with freezing an embryo. So preference is usually for embryo freezing over egg freezing, but for certain reasons, religious reasons and certain societal and traditional reasons and legal reasons, people rather go for egg freezing. So the difference is, sorry, um, another form of assisted reproductive technology is in vitro fertilization, which is the commonest type of um, assisted reproductive technology. In this case, the woman's eggs are exposed directly to the sperm in a laboratory dish. Then once the embryo is formed, it is transferred into the uterus or the womb. Another form of assisted reproductive technology is um, the in, in, um, intrauterine insemination. And this is like the cheapest form of assisted reproductive technology. In intrauterine insemination, the sperm is essentially injected directly into the woman's uterus through the vagina, definitely. Then it's one of, as I said, one of the cheapest form of assisted reproductive technology. Then we have the ICSI, which I explained um, earlier, that is intracytoplasmic sperm injection. It's just a direct injection of the sperm into the head. The difference between ICSI and IVF is that IVF is most often used for female factor infertility and unexplained infertility, Why the ICSI is most often used when there is a case of um, male factor infertility or in cases where we need to do achieve conception using the uh, uh, frozen egg. Then we also have the intrafallopian transfer. In this case, we have the gift and we have the zit. So essentially what they do is once the gamut or the zygote is formed in the zit, it is directly implanted in the fallopian tube. So the exception for gift and zift is if there is a female factor for infertility in which the tubes are destroyed or they are malfunctioning or malfunctional. So what are the um, reasons why people opt for assisted reproductive technology? Usually, number one is because of infertility and by way of um, definition, we define um, infertility as failure to achieve pregnancy after 12 months or more of regular unprotected sexual intercourse. Also, who are those that go for or opt for assisted reproductive technology? Patients with a tubal factor infertility, those are those that have a malfunctioning 
fallopian tubes. Then also male factor infertility, maybe a low quality, um, a low production of sperms or low quality sperms. Then also, if a woman has a diminished ovarian um, reserve, as I said earlier, once you do the AMH, the anti mullerian hormone test, it helps to assess your ovarian reserve. So if you have a diminished ovarian reserve, you go for assisted reproductive, assisted reproductive um, technology. Then also in cases of ovarian failure, like premature menopause, early menopause and all sorts, people hope for assisted reproductive technology. So long you have good reproductive organs, your endometrial pain, your, um, your your womb lining is okay and you can your body can essentially support medication certain medications or if you want to opt for surrogacy and also unexplained infertility the couple after 12 months or more of um uh, what do you call it um on a unprotected sexual intercourse then the success rate, the chances of giving birth to a healthy baby following assisted reproductive technology has to do with a lot of factors. We have the maternal age, the status of the embryo. Some um, doctors usually implant or transfer the embryo, embryo at a very early stage, which is not beyond or out of order. But certain group of females would... Um, would um, accept embryos which are gone through a lot of division. So most times it is advisable you discuss options like assisted action, or you read about it and discuss it with your fertility doctor, so that least they will have that in their purview when they consider you for assisted reproductive technology. So reproductive history is also one of the factors. Women who have previously given birth are more likely to be able to get pregnant using IVF. So lifestyle, modific um, lifestyle factors also contribute to um, assisted reproductive technology options too. Women who smoke typically have a fewer eggs retrieved during IVF. So if you're in the habit of smoking, it's better for you to stop it if you intend to do any form of assisted reproductive or go through any form of assisted reproductive technology. Now we'll be talking about surrogacy. So what is surrogacy? Surrogacy is a form of third party reproduction in which a woman consents to carry a pregnancy for an intended parent, parents or a couple. So it's usually an arrangement, of, um, usually an arrangement supported by legal agreements so who are those that consider surrogacy? If you have a medical problem with your uterus, you can consider surrogacy. If you've had hysterectomy, that is removal of your womb, you can consider surrogacy is a good option. Then if you have conditions that make pre and pregnancy impossible or risky for you, such as severe heart disease, heart disease, surrogacy is a good, um, the good option. So we have traditional surrogates and we have the gestational surrogates. The traditional surrogates are those that get artificially inseminated with the father's sperm only. That means the egg in this union is that of the surrogate. So a surrogate is essentially, a traditional surrogate is essentially a biological mother to that baby. And we have a um, gestational surrogate um, that's when the surrogate is essentially a gestational carrier. The, the job of the surrogate is just to carry the egg, the fertilized egg and sperm to term. Um, and a gestational surrogate, unlike the traditional surrogate, is known as the birth mother. So we call a gestational surrogate a birth mother. We call a traditional surrogate biological mother. In both cases, Whichever parent or the couple which intend to parent this child are called the, um, sorry, in the gestational, what they call it, in the gestational surrogate, the um, surrogacy rather, the couple, or rather the couple who donate this egg are called the biological parents. 
So there are some, there is no regulation in respect to you choosing your surrogate, but there are some um, agreements which the experts have concluded on. Um, and they say that you choose a surrogate who is at least 21 years old, a surrogate who has given birth to at least one healthy baby, a surrogate who has a good mental health status because at the end of the day, you don't want to go into a legal um, discord or legal issues in respect to this child. Then also, it is advisable you get a surrogate who is well, who, who is learned in a way, who understands the role of the role contracts play in respect to this situation. So, um, we have embryo donation and adoption. Some couples may decide, or by way of miracle or whatever, they might just decide not to use their embryos anymore. And uh, rather rather than dispense or discarding these embryos, they take it to the embryo bank, get stored, or by way of um, contract or agreement, they give, sort of gift in quotes, to an intended couple who cannot achieve, who have a problem with infertility. So, the legal approach to surrogacy and assisted reproductive technology in Nigeria. The subject of surrogacy is um, a unique one in Nigeria and in many countries, and it is an emerging area in many jurisdictions. There is no legal framework regulating surrogacy in Nigeria. However, there is a system of arranged third party, third party reproductive prevalence in Nigeria. In addition, there are some private organizations or surrogacy agency like um, the Meet Surrogate Mothers Agency Limited on Instagram. You can check them up on Instagram. Generally, the absence of law guiding egg freezing and any other form of assisted reproductive technology in Nigeria has contributed to the growing unethical practices with both surrogacy and assisted reproductive technology. So the uh, unethical practice as seen, which is prevalent these days, is baby factories, especially in the East. Well, that's what we made to, because there might be other places, but that which is well reported is that in the East, baby factories in the East. And also, there are cases of exploiting the surrogate mothers, either the surrogate mothers or the parents. Either ways, both sides can be exploited, and this is because there are no laws guiding surrogacy. So, so I don't know if I should continue with the common questions about egg freezing here, or I should take the questions from the congregation. Should I continue with the common questions I have here? Thank you, Dr. Yinka. Um, yes. Um, I know you are not yet done with your slide. Or are you done okay. with the slide? Yes, I'm done with the slides. Okay, fantastic. So let, let's probably ask people here whether they have questions before we go into the common ask questions. Um, questions. Okay. Do we have people in the house who have questions? So I'm very curious, what is the financial cost of all of these things? I'm very curious about it, the average financial cost. Okay, first, I would like to start by saying that every step has some sort of fees attached to it. So like, I know for consultations in certain in certain fertility clinics with good success rate, first, the consultation can go as high as 300,000 Naira. That is just for the consultation. Now, we've not even moved to, okay, okay that is consultation, 300,000 Naira only. Then, the next step, which is the ovarian stimulation, where you're given certain drugs. The truth is, the drugs you can, the good thing is some fertility centers can tell you to go source for the drugs. Some fertility centers will rather provide those drugs to you. 
the cost of drugs varies, and that is because it's either you're giving oral drugs or you're giving drugs which you can use via other routes like injections. So if you're budgeting for for the ovarian stimulation, I will encourage you just try to budget roughly about hundred thousand naira, roughly. Making four hundred now. Yes, yeah, making four hundred. Yeah. Sorry. So now going to the next step, which is the um, egg retrieval and the um, what do you call it? Yeah, egg retrieval process and the subsequent processes. You see, you cannot really quantify the skill of a of a physician. So most often than not, I would want to skip those parts because those parts are very very they are tailored towards whatever that physician. There's no fixed price for that. It's whatever the physician wants. You will have to pay. So, so like, essentially, what I'll just. So, like, what's the range? Just range. Okay, the range for all the steps, starting from step one to step four. Keep in view about 1.5 million naira to 2 million naira in Nigeria. Okay, thank you. In Nigeria. And, and we know that that does not cover surrogacy fee. No. Thank you. No, no, no. no. Yeah. No, no, no. Because no. surrogacy because if you do all that and at the end of the day you can't carry the child, surrogacy fee is bargain and it's something in the neighborhood of um, f f between the ranges of 5 to 8 million. Ah, uh, yes. I, I well I would want to I would want to um fixate a price. No, that's why I said that, yeah, r r range. That's the range. Okay, the total. Okay, let's say 5 to 8 million. Yeah, okay. And the reason being that is because um, it depends on how much the commission, there are some commissioning parents who are willing to even do beyond that. So that's why I would that, that's what I, That's why we're range. just saying range. We know it can be more than that. Doctor, don't let us spend yeah, too much time that. on price. Oh, I think okay. it's, it's clear that it's not cheap. Uh, Mr. Gunden, no, your questions, not. please. There are further, people have more questions, so let's have you. No problem, yes. Well, your questions are welcome. Okay, thank you very much for your very wonderful explanation. My question one, why is egg freezing not 100% certain for facility when spams can be targeted to fertilize the eggs in vitro? Okay. Okay, now, as I said, the uh, method that is used if you have to freeze your egg is what we call the intracytosplasmic sperm injection. So instead of going through the process of traditional IVF, where the egg is surrounded by a lot of sperms, the doctor or the physician or the healthcare provider just goes straight, injects the egg with the sperm. So what are the, you said, why is there no 100% certainty? There are, all of, there are all of factors. Number one, we look at, okay, we look at the person carrying this pregnancy. There are some little things that advise post what they call transfer of the embryo, like rest. Certain women might just decide that, oh, my, I, can, I can do with certain activities following this procedure. And again, I would like to say that it's not every woman that, um, that can be guided in respect to success rate by not doing strenuous activities within 48 hours of any embryo transfer. What I'm trying to say is, essentially, is there are a lot of factors. Stress. If you subject yourself to stress, there are on, there's no 100% guarantee that this procedure will take. If you have any form of uterine, although you've had, you'd have been screened from for any form of um, gynecological procedure. Okay, sorry to um, interject, Dr. Yeah. The bottom line is that there are some variable factors that can make it possible for it to fail. That's what you have tried yes. to explain. Yes, because it still yes, has so many you. questions, so that's why I don't want you to spend so much time okay. on one. My second question. Okay. Can egg freezing help avoid congenital diseases by isolating eggs that are not, uh, that probably have chances of carrying diseases that are congenital that could, can't egg freezing help to uh, uh, eliminate that? Yes, of course. 
um, once the embryo has been formed, we go through, um, the embryo can be subjected to a procedure known as, or a service or a procedure known as the pre-implantation screening, genetic screening. So essentially this egg or the embryo which has been formed from the egg and the sperm mm. is screened for every form of abnormality before being transferred to the Wonderful. woman's womb. So that yes. you know, we have spent almost 10 million or thereabout to have a baby. You should not come have a baby that will, should have issues. Okay, yes, most, but, okay. But, but Can I, you let mentioned, me just try to say that most often than not, the pre-implantation genetic screening forms part of the procedure. Okay. It's on rare occasions where you see that, oh, you want to select, you wouldn't select before transferring to the... But you also mentioned, us. doctor, that there's some people with religious inclination that you mustn't select. Let it just come Yeah, that's out why there. I... Exactly. That's why I said most often than not, pre-implantation genetic screening forms part of the whole process of assisted reproductive technology. But in cases where religious views of certain clients might not you might not uh, my what do you call it, go the other way. They just don't want to select. You. And a matter of fact, they will rather you implant all the embryos. So whichever take, if it's multiple gestation, fine. If it's a single chain, fine. They will rather you transfer all the embryos without doing any selection or any other thing. Okay. Yeah, there are cases like that. Number three question. Can't egg freezing help in sex termination? You know, there are countries, maybe not in Nigeria, we have uh, gender imbalance. Can't we use this to correct gender imbalance in society? Oh, of course. You can use it for selection of the sex, of the gender of the child. Okay. Again, as I mentioned, there are certain conditions like sickle cell, like um, if you have patients or a couple, both couple, or both um, the spouse, is the male and the female, have, have sickle cell carriers. In fact, there are cases, those are the cases where we we even go, we emphasize on select, um, selection criterion before implantation into the okay. womb. Yeah. Can't egg production be achieved or enhanced? Is it possible that medicine can help uh, if you can stimulate the dropping of egg? Can there be a way for us to stimulate production of egg and uh, so that this 31 million to 300,000 uh, reduction would not occur. So at least... It... You, know, you, know, so that... you know, primarily, primarily, what we're discussing is egg freezing, and there are reasons why people are freezing their eggs. And one of the reasons that, one of the reasons I mentioned earlier is personal reasons, religious reasons. Some people, you can, you, no matter how much you stimulate the or oh, I'm not okay. you do an ovarian stimulation. The question is to what end? Do you understand? Mm. To what end are you just you're, you're essentially putting yourself in arms with? So to what, what end when you know you're not going to fertilize these eggs? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. My final question. I think medicine should be more specific about okay. the definition of infertility. And you said... Okay unprotected uh, sexual, sexual intercourse. intercourse. I think there should be a sex oh. count. There should be a count to be able to suki, to be able to better help couples to be able to suki. Ah, if they say they are, one is living in Sokoto, another person is living in uh, Abuja, and they only come around once. I think it should be, it should be more clearer definition to help young couples to know they have made the count to qualify for the 12 months. 12 months can be just... Okay. Do, do you get that, doctor? So probably we I have... I get it, I get it, I get it. Mm, thank you. So um, again, I'll repeat that infertility is um, when a couple cannot achieve pregnancy after 12 months or more of unprotected sexual intercourse. So if, um, by way, if I, to elaborate further, is usually advised that any intended couple who want to achieve pregnancy within the course of 12 months or less, or rather, or rather within the course of 12 months, definitely it would, you do your own due diligence by always being around your partner. No, 
you have to have consistent, unprotected, what they call it, sexual intercourse. What's the point of the distance? The, the man, my point. he will do love while <laughs> something will be coming. <laughs> well, my point is, if you want to achieve pregnancy within 12 months, it will be better both of you are together. No need of doing the long distance. It's not going to work. Well, it might work for some, but in pros prospectively, if you don't want to get to the stage where you do classified under the group of infertile couples, couples, just do your own homework by being together to achieve that conception. Thank you very much. Any other question? Are, are you doing praise the Lord or asking question? Okay, please, how many other people have questions, please? We... Okay, good evening, doctor. Thank you so much for this session. Um, welcome. The question is, is it only in Nigeria that we don't have ethical or government policies, you know, for these people that do this fraud thing or use other people's um, egg and all, that the doctor can just decide to, you know, be fraudulent with the frozen egg? Is it only in Nigeria we don't have the policy or is it everywhere? And if it is everywhere, oh. is there any... Um, anything that is b that will be done or anything that should or that we can see that they are trying to do Sha, to make sure these things don't happen or it's going to be like that for a long time i don't know if you get my question okay first of all i i understand your point first of all i'll try i would like to state that the policies for our um, assisted reproductive technology keep changing and that's because of a lot of factors like now, when you look at the LGBTQ community, LGBTQ2 plus S plus community. Now, that category of people have made it, have made what they call have, have made the definition of many things to keep evolving. Like now, definition of parents of parenting is evolving. It's not the regular male, female, you can check your dictionary. Also, policies keep involving to accommodate or to include this group of people in the sense that um, certain governments that have laid down or statutory laws in respect to uh, um, assisted reproductive technology change these laws as often as possible to accommodate this minority group in court. So it is not a peculiar thing to Nigeria in respect to not having statutory laws or having statutory laws, but not steady statutory laws in court. Not steady. It says that it keeps changing. This laws keep changing. I don't know. Did I answer very your question? Very clear. Very no? clear. Very, very clear. Quickly. Okay. We have more questions online. Quickly, please. Um, good evening, doctor. Um, the question goes thus. What's the place of faith in all of this? Definitely, in all of these, um, faith is not contravened in court. You can have your faith and you go on with your natural decision or a decision to go to go pregnant naturally or to have to achieve pregnancy naturally. But if your faith cannot cannot sustain the old rigors, instead of subjecting yourself to fear, you can go up with the option again. As I stated earlier. Humans can create humans, yes. A doctor can decide to bring the eggs, the ovaries, and create any human. But the only person that makes these humans become beings, to become living souls, is God. Mm. So at the end of the day, it's a question of, would you like to embrace the technology which God has given to his own living soul, or you would just rather... I would say rather stick to your faith. You can go by, you can, you can, uh, what do you call it? It's just if you have to go by your faith. Th Whatever your faith can. Okay. Thank you, doctor. It's just yeah. that by way of addition, we know from scripture that faith without works is dead. So, okay. So, I, 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 we've never argued why we want to use our faith in ensuring that um, just as it happened to the, um, Philip, 
we go, we board our vehicles, we enter the aircraft, and we have not been using that teleportation. That is the okay. fate of Philip that we want to use. We don't want to pay for transportation. So, so I think okay. we, we, we are just hiding behind one finger by trying to select what we determine we want to use faith for and determine. We've never used faith to just speak to our engine or when our fuel tank is empty so that it can receive and be full just as Jesus kept multiplying food. And it's only on this one issue that we've chosen to say, oh, the love of Christ constrain us. Can we donate both eggs and sperm as Christians? <laughs> the cameraman had to laugh. <laughs> uh, when it was free, all hand was up. But you don't want to give freely. But you can't donate your own. I thought we love. Uh, uh, where is love now in this? So can Christians, as Christians, can we assist each other surrogacy? Free? Free? Should... Yes. Grounds, yeah. I, I probably might not want to do free, considering the the dramas that I have during pregnancy. No, no, we're talking but about if those it's a of free and fair, are gifted. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If it's a free and fair election, babies. it's a free and free, uh, free and fair carrying without any stress or whatsoever. He could, he could actually. Does it negate God in the sense that if I help you carry? Does he, does he take away the factor of God because I'm the one who has helped you? Let, let's call it gestation or whichever. Okay, see, see the bottom line is this. Um, oh, see, see, fine, fine. What is God saying about this comes in this now. But wait now, Sister Bimbo, let me answer you. That's what I'm saying. But when we want to borrow money, yes, ma, I, I agree. But when we want to borrow money, when we want to step into someone else's car to get a ride, we don't ask. When we want to go and drop our children with someone else so that we can be about some other things, we don't ask. No, no, do, do, we, yeah, do we ask at that time? When we... Amen. But, but what, you see, one of the things we want to achieve this evening is not necessarily because, oh, you must go and do this. But we're asking that is our community growing to the point where you can be of help to someone else in the same community? Can you help your brother or sister carry their child and it's still a righteous thing to do? Love your neighbor as yourself. Look at how these Christians are looking at me. Guys, let's... So... Yes, we agree. I think there's already... God has laid out the example for us in the Bible. Which is? Mary carried Jesus for God. Fantastic. Please, can you have me give a, a round of applause? Mary carry Jesus for God. So why can't we now carry for our brothers and sisters? Pastor, today, can you allow your wife help carry for someone else? First person to make that decision. It's a decision, but can you allow it? Like like um like a, like a, like it like it like you, need, you need to ask god for hey, hey. That. <laughs> and i'm sure that's how you were asking god before you buy fuel inside your vehicle too <laughs> see my brothers and I, matter of the art though is a serious matter because this is a this is a, this is a matter that can that has lots of implications like what? That Implication you... of, I'll help you to carry this baby now. What if I'm now emotionally attached to the baby? 
No. All those. But you are a child of God hey, now. Oh, no, no. Mary was. Mary remember that did 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 Jesus not tell did Jesus not tell Mary that I must be about my father's business? Excuse me. But in Mary's case, sir, the baby stayed with Mary. Till, Till what time? At least you, even when he died, she, she was see, still following See the bottom line. Down. See the bottom line. Anna was still seeing her baby. Oh. See the bottom line. But this is not your baby. You are just carrying. It's not yours. When he Yes. Nobody is forcing you. So we're asking, can you? And she accepted. She is your aunt made in love. Use me. So it's not about Mary was available to F1. carry the baby. It was not about Mary was available to carry the baby. So Mary chose to accept that is what the will I'm of saying. God. Can hey, we start so encouraging I know you? Don't drama know you won't around choose. Being pregnant. No problem. So, but we're, we're not forcing it on anybody. But I'm, I'm asking, I'm sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I'm asking that, can I love you enough and say that this, I can, I can do it. It doesn't, does it negate faith? Pastor, let, let's even take it far into the spiritual that we are asking God. Mm. This technology, this innovation, is it from the pit of hell? It's from God. Well, because our ways are not his ways. Can he not instruct you as a daughter of Zion? And say, and say, eh, and said, and say, and say, my daughter, carry for sister Janet. We, we, we've Would you that. say yes? So that's the question. Will you say yes? Now, you see, they've gone quiet again now. I'll Will carry, you say I'll yes? carry, I'll carry. As long as, as long as there's no issue. Okay, so the bottom line. <laughs> okay, guys, we, before we leave here this evening, this is what we are coming to. I think one of the things, the service we've done to ourselves. Doctor, you have a question? Okay, I think one of the service we've done to ourselves simply is this. From as simple as people doing IVF, and when they want to give the testimony, they are embarrassed to say it is so. And they will just say, God did it. You understand? Like if it takes away from God, if you acknowledge that, oh, this is, it's where this means. So bottom line is that I think one of the things Dr. Aofodo has helped us to achieve today is to just open our mind just from being closed and see all these options and that it doesn't negate God. Remember some of the Bible verses she quoted when she was starting? You knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. Those technology by themselves do not always succeed. What makes you human, a being, before the bones came together, you knew me, is beyond just what a man can take credit for. So, please, what I'm saying is that beyond some people who do this for contract, for business, our hearts must be open enough to be able to hear God. All the Christians that say, yes, God leading them. How many of us will have capacity to conceive that God can tell you to help your sister or your brother to carry their, their child? And you will see the pregnancy and then you will still assist your wife. Bro... <laughs> But that was exactly what Joseph did as well. That was exactly what Bible Joseph did. The family members did ask Joseph. They asked them. But this person, we are told that and he did not know her until she has done what? So, uh, we are still in church, you. Okay. So, guys, I think it's a safe place to close this evening and we allow Dr. Dr. Alfred is talking to us all the way from Joss and she's done a wonderful job this evening. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. God bless you. I can assure you that God is in this and that is why internet did not fail. Because with all the best of this technology, internet can fail. And so, the same way with all this 
method of technology that we are talking about, it is we are believing God for it. Okay, it's a good way to close this evening and we pray out of the world where some ethics are thrown into the being. Where a young man will just walk before a woman and say, Madam, lie down there, remove your... No, no, no empathy, no sense of care. And I'm talking about a guy. And I was there. I felt like slapping him. And what did he want to do? He wanted to do a, 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 a swipe for my wife. And he was a guy. And because there's so many people there. So you don't even have the luxury of start choosing of saying that, oh, I want this or I want that. It is scriptural when it says people suffer so many things from physician. So just before you guys are good, or doctors, you are good, though, but at times people suffer from physician. Can we just bow down our heads and pray and trust God and make a confession of faith for somebody believing God for a child that supernaturally God's power will come upon them? Can you use somebody in particular to pray right now? The question was asked, how can this thing be? How can it be? And Mary was told that the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Can we ask that the power of God will overshadow men and men, women, people whose face are dwindling right now? Can we believe God for them? That truly it will be their testimony to that they will not consider their own body or the deadness of the womb, but who against hope will believe in hope. And God can make this a reality. Can we have compassion in our hearts to just believe God for mercy and to say, just as the scripture was fulfilled in the life of Sarah, he said, God has made me to laugh. Men will hear it and they will laugh with me. That for people who are believing God, it will come true for them. It will make them to laugh. Men will hear about it and they will laugh with them truly in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we are grateful to you, King Immorta, our only wise God, for all that you have done for us. We bless your righteous name and we are thankful. We pray you, Lord God of heaven and earth, that you will speak to us as individuals in a way we can understand better. And you will open our bowl of compassion and mercy. Lord, help us, Lord, to understand you better and what you are saying in this season. And let your name be glorified forevermore in our lives. And so we leave this place with this simple understanding that your word says, according to the time of life, this time next year, you will be with your child. I believe you, Lord God Almighty, for as many who have tuned in today who have this kind of expectation. The way you visited, we trust you for visitation and we know according to the time of life, this time next year, somebody will come here to testify. And they will say, family month last year, we believe you, God, in agreement with this person, and you have come true. We judge you faithful, and we judge you righteous. We judge you kind, and we judge you loving. And we know you will always do for us more than we can ask or imagine, that your name and your name alone be glorified forevermore. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for taking time to come. The account number was stroll for us to give our offering and make our donation. If you want to do that, you can collect the envelope from our ushers this night and then you can drop your offering. Can we share the grace together in fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening, Dr. Yenka Ofodu. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. God bless you.